This video is for the line of best fit. So we're still talking about scatter plots here. So <clears throat> what we're doing is we're drawing trend lines. So we're trying to write an equation for the data that we have. So your first step is to draw a scatter plot of the data. And so you can see that down here we've already got a scatter plot drawn. And then step two would be to sketch a line that follows the trend most closely. So there should be about as many points above the line as there are below. So if you look at the scatter plot down here, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six points above the line. And one, two, three, four, five, six six points below the line. So that's what we want. We want about the same amount above and below the line. And then um, step three, you're going to choose two points on your sketch. They don't have to be actual data points. So here they've already given us points, 3 comma 7 and 18 comma 2. And you can use your calculator um, where you go in and you put those points into a table or into your list. And so you would put your x's into list 1 into that column and your y values into list 2 into that column and you would get um, do linear regression and it would give you the slope and the y-intercept and so for this one you would get y equals negative one-third x plus 8 so that would be the equation of my trend line so on this next slide we're actually going to do it so um, what is the general description of the scatter plot below so it looks like it's going downhill so this would be a negative association. Number two says how many points are above the trend line and how many points are below. So above, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, and below, one, two, three, four, five, six. So we've got six above and six below. And again, remember, that is what we are wanting. Now it said, what are the coordinates of the two points on the trend line? So on the trend line, we've got this point here and this point down here. So the coordinates for this top one, this one that's higher, would be 1, 8. And for this one down here, 7, 2. So how I got um, the two, if you notice this graph, counts by two. So 2, 4, 6, 8. So those are your two points. And so if you use your stat list and you put these in, uh, number four says, what is an interpretation of the slope and y-intercept of the trend line? So again, if you stick these into your list and you do linear regression, you would get negative x plus 9. So a trend line is a straight line that comes as close as possible to the points on a scatter plot. They're approximately the same number of points above and below the line, and you're going to ignore any outliers. So, for example, this here would be an outliner. It's not grouped together like the rest of the data is. And so we're going to draw a trend line here. So, again, remember you want about the same number above and below. And so you can do this with a ruler. You can do this with the edge of a book. And so if I draw a trend line in here, again, we want about the same number above and below. And so you can see here that I've got one point below and I've got a couple others that are almost below it. And then I've got two above. So even though it's different, even though I have two above and one below, that's okay because we want about the same number above and below. And so B says predict how much you should expect to have to pay in repairs for an eight-year-old car. So how you would do this, um, age of car is on the x-axis, so we would go to where eight is, and we would follow this up to where our trend line is. And then once we got to our trend line, we would go across to see what the cost would be or what the y value would be. So if you go across here, you're a little bit above $800. So for an eight-year-old car, you would expect to pay approximately $800 plus maybe a little bit more, a little bit over $800.